We're here at Didcot Power Station in Oxfordshire, in the southeast of England. The idea of being here is so that we can show the use of wear protection in a coal fired power station. Didcot consists of Didcot A and Didcot B. Didcot B is a combined gas and coal fired power station. Didcot A is coal only. So we're going to be looking at how wear protection is used throughout the process here at the station. We're going to look at coal coming in at the beginning. We're going to look at the coal being crushed and pulverised into the burners and out again as ash. The reason for doing a video documentary on it is so that it's more interesting. You get more in terms of talking to the people here, getting a proper idea of what's going on. The story of power generation at all coal-fired power stations like this here at Didcot A all starts off with the fuel coming on site. Because Didcot A is a land-based station, all of our deliveries of coal come by train. The first stage of the process is where the coal is dropped off from the trains. It goes from underneath the trains itself, so the bottoms open up. The coal goes down into chutes, and from those chutes, the coal goes onto a conveyor where it'll end up being taken from outside to inside the building, where it'll then end up being stored for a short, short time before it's then processed, milled, and then put into the boiler itself so it can then be burned. Our involvement on this part of the plant starts upon uh, receipt of the coal at the coal reception hoppers below. Uh, if it was just the coal that was being handled, then it's relatively easy to manage. But because you get foreign particles of metallic materials, of wood, of debris, then ultimately you have to protect to ensure that doesn't cause a problem throughout the rest of the plant. It's important to get the material away very, very quickly in order to reduce the cost of any waiting time associated with the discharge of the coal. Once it's discharged, it's then fed onto the conveyor belt. It then goes through a series of transfer chutes, and those transfer chutes can do one or two things. One, they can transfer it onto another conveyor belt, or two, they can send it out to stack. As you can see here, the site holds a lot of coal stock, which ultimately is then sent back up to the power station for distribution into the bunkers. And we've used an array of different materials here to counter impact, to counter wear, to, to counter friction-induced abrasion and some of those materials consist of ceramic, metallic or polymer lining systems. We're now at the coal reception point at Didcot uh, and our involvement here has been to improve the wear resistance of the existing lining systems involved in this part of the plant and also the efficiency. Uh, in order to aid the discharge of the coal, we've lined the coal reception hoppers with a combination of our K-flow ferretic stainless steel and also our KFLAS polyethylene lining. We've used a various grades of material and various thicknesses to counter the impact and to counter the wear associated with discharging the material from the wagons onto the plough shelf below. What we're looking at there is a discharge leg onto a conveyor belt. The coal transfer chute above is taking it from the conveyor above, discharging it onto the tripper conveyor that feeds the bunkers. Uh, as you can see there, that's lined, uh, and we've lined that with 25mm thick Kaolock ceramic linings. Uh, that will counter impact, it will counter friction, it will counter all types of different uh, abrasion that takes place in coal transfer chutes. And I'll be realistic to say that that's been in service for about 10 to 12 years. So throughout that service, you can guarantee there's been no trouble with uh, perforation of the fabrication or discharge onto the floor. We're now stood on the top of the station coal bunkers. The main problem the station was having here was uh, the amount of discharge they were achieving when the bunkers were lined with a whole combination of different materials was causing them great problems of discharge into the feeders. Uh, continual discharge into the feeders is very important in order to get the correct amount of tonnage fed down to the coal mill to ensure the milling process is correct and the correct distribution up to the burners. What they wanted was here to achieve mass flow, so what we did is we redesigned some internal geometry of the bunkers using radius kernel sections, and then we lined it with our K-flow ferretic stainless steel, and we applied it using traditional welding and mechanical fixing, which ultimately give them a totally seamless lining inside the bunker. That now gives a degree of wear protection on the basis it's got a true hardness of about 240 Brunel, it gives them a very low coefficient of friction on the basis of the stainless steel polishes 
and the fact that it's fully welded prevents any internal corrosion taking place in internal steel substrate. We're currently on the feeder floor where we've got all the coal stored in the bunkers above. As you can see above us, the actual storage area itself. At the bottom of the coal hopper itself, you've then got the feeder. This is a gravimetric feeder. It actually weighs the material as it's going through and on a weigh belt system, it transfers the coal and then it diverts it down into the mill itself. Kingfish has got an involvement in some of this equipment, which John's going to explain. We were tasked to undertake the whole project consisting of removal of the old feeder, which were volumetric feeders, which as a, by nature of their operation tends to dump material down inside the feeder. Uh, we removed the old feeders, we were also tasked, as I said before, to line the bunkers to achieve mass flow into the feeders, which without mass flow the feeders don't operate. And then likewise we were tasked to install new feeders by UK based OEM, which ultimately weigh and distribute coal at different rates, ensuring they've got between 30 and 40 tonnes per hour of material they discharge into the mill at any one time. Now down in the mill bay, where all of the coal has now been coming from the hoppers above, the graphometric feeders, the product itself then drops down into these mills. On the top of the mills there are three pipes, one of which is where the coal comes into the mill itself, and then there's two pipes which the coal that's subsequently been milled leaves. As the coal comes down into the mill it's pushed out onto a plate and then it's ground down using balls that rotate as part of the process. That grinds down the coal into a very fine talcum powder-like substance. It's mixed up with all of the fluidizing air that's put in separately into the mill itself. It's then mixed together. It then leaves the mill through the top, leaves through the two pipes at the top, and is then conveyed through the pul pulverized fuel pipework, of which is lined with Kingfisher tiling, all the way up into the burners itself, and is then fired into the actual furnace. The pulverised coal that's come from the coal mills, it's been separated and the fine particles of coal dust are conveyed up vertically, turns at that bend there, it's then conveyed horizontally where it goes through a trifurcator. So that's a brief overview of how coal is used at Didcot A power station. What we do is take several hundred thousand tonnes of coal over the process of a year and produce 2,000 megawatts of electricity whenever it's required. I'd like to thank RWEM Power for making this day possible. Uh, a big thanks to Luke and his colleagues for giving us access to the plants. Uh, I think we've demonstrated some of the benefits that Kingfisher can offer the industry in terms of improving the efficiency and longevity of some of the equipment we've seen. Uh, and if you think you can benefit from what we can offer, then please give us a call.